Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to gaming with me, Tony Mo, and we're here today checking out something quite a bit different. We're playing a little game called The Signal from Tolva. This is a game made by Bad Robot, uh, Jim Rosignale, X Rock Paper Shotgun. Uh, he worked on a little game with his team called Sir, You Are Being Hunted. You may have played that. And uh, let me just start by saying if you liked Sir, if you if you liked Sir or Madam, You Are Being Hunted. I think you'll like what Jim and his team have done here with the signal from Tolva. Uh, there are some similarities between the two games. It is very much an open world sort of just... I mean, I'd like to call it a bit of an immersive sim. It's, it's just about the world itself. There's not a whole lot of narrative. There are mysteries to be discovered. I've already ran into quite a few. I'm not sure if I'll be able to solve them. But all in all, it's just a really beautiful demonstration of what a small team of really great indie devs can do. Uh, they have a fantastic art style that's been injected into the game. It's directly inspired from an artist who works in a similar fashion. And actually, if you guys are a little bit more interested in the art, I don't want to ramble about it too much because I know most people aren't too concerned about it outside of what they see in game. But I will have a link to a video uh, where their main artist talks about the art style and how they basically injected it into the game. And I think it's really worth watching if the art that you see here is something that ends up uh, fascinating you. So let me just, uh, it's been a while since I played. Let me make sure I get my controls right here. The basic premise, though, is that we are potentially humans on a ship outside of this planet. And we're hijacking the surveyor robots on this planet to discover some of its mysteries. More so to search for the signal from Tolva itself. So... We can hijack uh, basically any number of these surveyor bots by coming to these bunkers. Uh, we can also then go ahead and upgrade these bots. So if we actually go ahead and access this panel here for the Tolva network, we'll see that this is currently our drone's unique ID. He is AG uh, underscore OCNAV. We can also see our current rank, our resources, our reactor drain, our, the missions that we've completed, data signals, and bunkers that we currently control. We can also go ahead and customize our loadout with credits that we get from killing other enemies and collecting resources out on the battlefield. But this is basically our loadout system here. So we've got a primary and secondary weapon, which we can mix and match however we sit. We see fit. We've got our shield. We've got our AOE uh, damage equipment, which can be modified in a number of different ways. We don't actually have to do damage. For example, we can force local hostiles to retreat uh, for a longer period of time. We could go ahead and cause local hostiles to, again, to retreat. This is the basic version of it. We can boost capacity when repairing allied units. We have our hazard suit. So this is a big part of what gates off certain areas of the world. Now, you're never actually gated by, like, a wall, but certain areas on the map inside of Tolva may contain radiation or poisoning. So you can see that I have my radiation proofing, which means I can go to areas of the map that are irradiated. I cannot go to places that have chemical or psionic issues, though. You're going to notice that these are going to require more missions to unlock, allowing me to unlock more of the map to sort of continue my progression. So there's a pretty big selection of weapons. Uh, I'm running a modified uh, disruptor rifle. It has improved optics. And you can see there's a lot going on with the stats here. That's a lot of the comparisons you're going to be making is like, okay, do I take this? Do I want something that shoots fast? Do I want something that hits harder? And I'm also currently running a pretty heavy sniper rifle. So this is a long-range heavy accelerator rifle that has a complexity pack. So I've got a better scope on that. You can see my max range. If I wanted to, though, I could run the command module. So this is a big part of the game that I haven't gotten too into. But the basic idea here is that we can actually override other surveyors and then send them on missions with us. Now, I should point out that a big part of this game is actually the AI, whether it's friendly or enemy. The AI will kind of go about their own routine. And that's, that's sort of one of the things that makes Tolva very special is the just persistent world. You know, the AI doing whatever they feel like doing, interacting. You know, they're, they're carrying out their own routines. You know, that's something that games talked about, big AAA games talked about for a long time. And I feel that some of the best games that I've ever played really focus on AI that kind of do their own thing. Because that allows the player to not just directly interact and influence these AI, but to interact and be influenced by the performance or the, the route, you know, the whatever the AI is interacting, how they're interacting with the environment. You get what I'm saying. So let's actually open up the map and take a look at a prime example of that. So this is a military bunker located in the Splinter Channel. Now it's currently under bandit control. The bandits have actually just recently recaptured this bunker. So I used to own the bunker. 
and they just took it back. So we're actually going to take that bunker back because it's a valuable resource. I can spawn from it. I can get equipment from it. And right now I'm really focused on making my way into this portion of the map, potentially to see what sort of radiation I'm dealing with here. It seems radiated. It says it's radiated. So I should be able to make it inside to complete this mission. But in order to do that, I'd like to have something a little bit closer to home here. Now, we actually have a spawn beacon that we still currently own in the area. So I'm going to hijack a surveyor in the area using the spawn beacon and make my way in. We're then going to eliminate all the enemies in that bunker to basically gain control of it. So let me just make sure we're headed in the right direction here. Open up our map to take a look. We are going to want to go up and through this way. Now we can, of course, use our headlights to kind of navigate around the map. We can turn them off. I think one of the things that Tolva does really well is its sound design. Lots of lasers in this game, which I love. The weapons sound great. I mean, just listen to my guy walking. Very heavy mechanical. It's very clear that I am indeed a robot. <laughs> not, there's no doubting what I am and what I've uh, taken control of here to navigate the map. And I really like the way they handled the headlights. It's just, you know, the, the two head feel, the two headlight feels very Johnny Five, and I really dig that. We're going to disable our headlights, though. We're going to go in here and we're going to actually. Disable all of our weapons. We can use our binoculars here to kind of scan the area. And we can also use this to mark targets. This is going to give us a little bit of information about these hostiles. It'll give us their rank, their current weapon. Uh, it's got a very MGS-5 feel to it that I really appreciate. So these are all hostile bandits. Uh, they are currently in patrol. Their mission is just to guard the area. They don't have any other missions at this point in time. One of them's got a car fiend. So it looks like an assault rifle. I'm not entirely sure if that one guy was running a sniper. I don't know the weapons well enough yet here, but that's that's one of the cool things about Tolva is, you know, it's it's very much about player choice. Uh, you know, it's not a very hand-holdy game. It's, it's what do you want to do? How do you want to play the game? Do you want to get a better understanding for the weapons and the equipment in the game and be more prepared when you attack enemies? Well, then you can do that. What the bandits have unfortunately done here is drop a turret. So we're going to have to really just lay in the firepower here to eliminate this turret. We can use some of our abilities. I have a disruptive damage ability on, but we're a little bit too far away for that to take effect. So I'm going to go ahead and pull out my sniper here and just really try and blast these uh, components on the ship here. Now, there isn't really a typical ammunition reload system per se. All of the weapons are energy based. So we're actually going to redown or put some sort of cooldown on the weapon in order to recharge it. Uh, you'll notice our health and our shields in the bottom left corner there. We're doing all right. Uh, a lot of splash damage. Not really getting any direct hits on us. So I'm going to keep picking away at this thing. We're going to go ahead and recharge our sniper here. And then I'm going to go ahead and pull out my rifle. And we're just going to try and blast it with some pulse shots. Uh, the enemy is definitely starting to take notice of us. I'd like to eliminate that turret before we deal with any of the mobs. But if they start to push in on us, we'll just kind of resituate and engage them before we deal with the turret again. We are going to have to eliminate everything in order to recapture this bunker. So Now, the enemies themselves are surveyor bots just much like our own faction. So they have a lot of the same weapons, a lot of the same equipment. Uh, you might see them actually use some shielding on themselves. Uh, like I could go ahead and do if I wanted to, to, to deflect or to repel the damage from a secondary shot. There's lots of small little nuances to deal with with the enemies. And this is kind of just the start of it. I've faced much bigger enemies. In fact, we're probably going to run in a, into a much hard hitter, hard hitting enemy type uh, once we actually make our way into that irradiated area. So there's, oh, okay, we're getting flanked here, guys. So this was probably a patrol and you can see that guy is armoring up as I mentioned there. Unfortunately, we are probably gonna die at this point. That's kind of the point of Tulfa. <laughs> I've reached a point in the game now where things have become much more challenging. Uh, early on, I would say you're able to get through a lot of the game fairly it's it, there's still a challenge there don't make like, me act like there isn't but it's very much welcoming you into the world now that i'm pushing my way into the outer regions here uh, a lot of these areas have been much more challenging much more difficult to take on so we could resituate ourselves reconsider the equipment that we have and i think what we'll do is we'll head back to the military bunker i'm gonna grab the command module and see if we can't uh, bring some friendlies along to assist us in combat this time so what we're gonna do is we're gonna sacrifice our sniper rifle we're going to go ahead and drop this off for the command module. So hopefully this will help us out. Now, I do have some resources, but I'm sitting in a pretty good position when it comes to armor and things of those nature. Uh, I really would like to focus more on my conflagration damage, but you can see that I don't really have that unlocked just yet. I'm going to need to rank four. I'm also going to need to complete some other missions to unlock some of these goodies. So I've kind of just been sticking with what I've got. Uh, just kind of living and learning. I'm only technically about an hour and a half into the game at this point with this current save. I did have a save when I played the game in pre-alpha. Oops. 
That's the wrong weapon. Unfortunately, they're going to be very happy, unhappy about that. Let me just, uh, I just, I just want to recruit you guys. No big deal. Now, with this version of the command module, we can only recruit two targets as a whole. So we're going to have to work with what we got there. Uh, unfortunately, we can't really just go to the spawn beacon now we'd have to find more friendlies if we went ahead and did that so we're actually just going to make our way over to the uh location with these two guys with us now i can go ahead and click and send them on their way and we'll just kind of navigate our way through the environment we're not too far away we'll go up around we can take a look at some of the scenery i'd like for it to turn to daytime i think that'd be quite swell uh so we could let's go ahead and order them in there so we could get a better look at some of the environments. Uh, it's just a very distinct sci-fi feel that Tolva has that I really appreciate. There's a lot of fun little mysteries in Tolva too. Uh, uh, I don't know if we'll run into any of them along the way, but I would really appreciate that. Obviously, wreckage, uh, you know, crash ships on the planet's surface, but uh, some other mysteries as well. Uh, you know, it's not really too much that I want to spoil. I think that's one of the fun things about Tolva is... It's been running into a lot of these weird, mysterious things. There's a lot of work that's gone in the environment, creatures that you'll run into, wisps, you know, in the air. They may seem like small things, but I think they add a lot of value to the overall experience. You can see this was actually a bandit uh, turret that was dropped for a battle that I was able to eliminate. So let's go ahead and get these guys to play a little bit of catch up here. They're, they're lagging behind. I like the idea of the command module. I need to spend a little bit more time with it. It's not my favorite thing right now. Um, but I know that if I maybe get the upgraded version, I can get more guys. I can start to see the value of it. Uh, I would say early on for me, it was just kind of something I ignored because I was really just focused on, you know, like soloing it. But now that I'm starting to deal with, you know, the number of enemies I'm dealing with and their, their output has been much more, uh, powerful. Let's put it that way. A lot of these guys are really running some heavy weaponry. I've noticed that having distractions could be a really big uh, benefit here. Now, I mentioned how the AI, they kind of do their own thing, and we saw that we actually got flanked by uh, that small two-man patrol or two-robot patrol from the bandits. Now, those guys could have been returning to base for a mission. They could have been on a reconnaissance or a patrol mission on that portion of the environment, and they just happened to see me. You know, there's a lot of those unpredictable elements in the game that I really appreciate. Let's get these guys moving up with this. I think that's, 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 I, ah, you know, to me, that's one of the biggest things about, about Tolva is, you know, just kind of watching the way the AI works. And one of the things I've had a lot of fun doing in the game is to find AI patrols and just kind of see what they do. Uh, you know, watch them interact with maybe other bandits, uh, with friendlies even. There are other factions on the planet outside of the bandits that they could be interacting with. I've seen fights between two enemy factions, uh, you know, going on. So lots of cool little bits and pieces here. We got our two guys up with us. We're not too far away from the bunker at this point. Everything is really well spaced out in Tolva. You do do a lot of walking. And I think if you don't enjoy aspects, if you don't enjoy a game that's like, hey, you know, go from point A to point B and, and you know, plan and coordinate your attack, you probably won't dig Tolva. But it's a much more laid back and relaxed experience. It's, it's an action game. There's no doubt about that. But it's not like, it's not trying to throw set piece after set piece after you. Uh, again, it's very much about just player immersion and just kind of, falling into the world and, and finding your own mysteries, finding your own combat engagements, finding your own solutions for each of these combat engagements. And I'm a sucker for games like that. And Tolva, by the way, is it's 20 bucks. It's like it's $20 only. Um, to me, it's it's worth at least twice that for the amount of time that I'm going to spend playing it. So here's the unfortunate thing. If we send our two guys in, they're pretty much going to get fried. I'm going to try and position them behind the rock over there. And hopefully they'll deal with a lot of the grunt work while I go ahead and lay into this thing. Uh, we Looks like we didn't need to do too much more damage, so that's a very fortunate situation. This guy is shielding up on our guys. I'm gonna go ahead and drop our damage bug there. We lost a, we lost two guys, but they definitely helped us. Let's, let's clean these guys up as quickly as we can. If we need to fall back to sort of reassess the situation, we will. They are gonna go ahead and call in their alarm. Okay, we got two down, two down now. Um, looks like we're good. I'm not sure if those guys ended up coming back to this location and defending after they eliminate us previously. We have no sniper rifle, so we do need to remember that. I just went to pull it out and was like, oh, I don't have one of those anymore. Let's just get a full recharge on our rifle here before we push in. Get some nice hits. I love the sound effects, guys. I really, really do. I'm not the biggest fan of the, the reload mechanic. Um... I find that, like, watching someone re-energize a rifle 
in the way that this game does it. It's, it's, it's so weird at first, you know? It's just like a mental thing. We're so used to seeing magazines reloaded or like vents uh, dissipated. And it looks like um, we might have some friendlies. Actually. That's that's obviously not the friendly I was talking about, but I think we've got some friendlies engaging from the rear. Let's just, let's just go ahead and bring out the command module. Yeah, would you look at that? Let's go ahead and recruit these two guys. Wrong, wrong mode there, guys. Wrong mode there. Yeah, look at that. We got two friendlies here. We can go ahead and shoot both of these guys. Um, we might actually be unable to target rank. Okay, so these guys are actually above rank, which is great for us because they've come to now help us engage in this combat situation. But uh, unfortunate for us because we can't actually go ahead and hit them with our current command module. But either way, it's important that we get back the splinter channel outpost here. This is a valuable position for navigation. And there you have it. We've recaptured it. So this is really just a small look at Tolva, guys. I think... I don't really want to give away too much uh, of Tolva. I think if you like what you see here from a combat perspective, just know the game gets much more difficult. There are larger bosses that you'll have to deal with and encounter. Turrets are a very basic boss that we'll have to deal with. There's, there's just a lot more going on in Tolva. And there's also some wonderful little mysteries to discover. Um, let's go ahead and recruit a couple of these guys. And uh, I think for our last little our last little hoorah here, we'll make our way into the Dirac Corrugation. And we'll take a look at some of the irradiated areas in the map and uh, showcase one of the bigger enemy types that you might run into in Tolva. We also go ahead and close that quick tips window. Now the game is available on Steam. You can get it on itch.io. I always forget how you say that. Uh, it's also available on Humble Bundle. I'll have some links down in the uh, pinned comment as well as the description if you guys are interested in picking it up. It is $19.99, as I mentioned. That is USD. If you're looking for just a chill, really great sci-fi world to dive into, maybe here and there, something that, you know, you can get through and maybe, uh, you know, you can sit down and play a mission here and there. I told us just it's the perfect game, guys. It is a really beautiful game when the sun comes out, too. And you can kind of look at this, this bleak, beautiful sci-fi world they've constructed. I think the artists have done a killer job. I like, I love, actually, small games like this from indie developers. Um, I think it's important that we we look at the value of some of the most just bare bones mechanics in, in game design and recognize how they can indeed be valuable gameplay experiences within themselves. We don't need all the dressing. We don't need all the windows. Hold, hold on a second, guys. I hear a drone. I don't know what these are. Look at these guys. I'm not sure what language they speak. I've killed one and I felt really bad afterwards. Can I, ha okay, can I hack it? I've never tried to do anything with the command module. No, unfortunately I can't. He's just gonna roll off and... <laughs> He's just gonna roll off. I don't know what the hell. That I've seen multiple of them. No idea what they are, but the sound they make is they <laughs> roll end over end, man. So, uh, it's just straight out of Star Wars. I love it. Told us a game that will make you smile. Um... You know, I don't really spend too much time on the channel talking about other games anymore. So when I do, it's because I find a game to be quite special. And like I said, Tolva is an example of uh, small team form factor game development. And just being like, yeah, look what we made. Look at this this fun little experience, this little world, this little universe we've made. Um, you know, if you can appreciate what's here, you'll find something quite special. So we are in a irradiated area. Fortunately, we have the, the right suit to protect that. I like what they do with the screen effects, so this is it. This is what we're going to see now. This is a radiated zone. Um, our robot friends, fortunately, have the resources to stay in here with us. Unfortunately, this is an area of the map that is populated by a very, very evil monster. You should look at this guy here. Unknown sentry object. Quarry string 988. It is hostile. That's all we need to know. He's got like a rocket for a butt. He's got a rocket launcher for a butt. We're going to go ahead and send our guys in. They'll probably die, but... uh. We're probably going to die too, and we'll leave it at that. <laughs> I don't think you guys need to see all of the mysteries of Tolva. There's a lot of cool stuff here to discover. Again, if you're interested in the game, I'll have all the information you need in the pinned comment down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I always like highlighting something different on the channel, especially when it's an awesome little project like Tolva. If you guys have any questions for me in regards to the game, feel free to leave them down in the comment section below. Uh, go check out that art video if the art in Tolva is something you're interested in. There's a whole lot more of it that I really didn't showcase in this video, so it's something to keep an eye out for. Have a great week, and I'll see you in the next one.